There is a flat earther out there who is considered the modern day father of the movement. He has amassed quite a following, and most flat earthers will at least give some credit for this person for introducing them to the flat earth community. I am of course talking about Eric Debay. Recently, he has released a documentary, a flat earth documentary entitled Level. Now, it's a flat earth propaganda piece, but how many of you remember me saying this? I am going to pull every single minute of this film apart. I'm going to put so much effort into it that when you search for this film, you'll be finding the debunk of it from me first. Well, that starts right now. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. They have so many classes that may interest you guys. Stargazing for beginners, algebra for physics, orbital motion classes, plus many, many more. Personally, I want to start being able to write better for the channel. So I've been dipping into this strategy for crafting great content class by award-winning journalist Soledad Obrin. There's even a lesson on how to be a better interviewer, which will be great for the podcast. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so there are no adverts. So that way you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity leads you. Plus, it is only $10 a month with an annual subscription. No matter what 2021 brings you, you can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes because time is what we make of it. The first 1,000 of you to click my link in the description gets a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Right, back to today's video and one Eric Debay. So Eric has released a one hour long documentary on Flat Earth, which means it's now my job to debunk every single last little piece of it. I warn you now, I'm going to be very thorough, so this entire debunk will likely be spread over three separate videos. Make no mistake, this will likely be my most comprehensive debunking ever. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? So there it is. The Earth from outer space. Do you believe this is a real, live recording? Do you believe? How about now? Does this make it more believable? Um, no. Many different space agencies have taken many different photos of Earth from space. Ask yourself, Is this real? Do you believe? Is this real? Let's try this another way. Breaking news! NASA finally did it. They finally did it. They're finally live streaming the Earth spinning from outer space. The world is celebrating. This one will go down in history. The thing is though, there has been a live stream of Earth from space for ages. This clip here was taken from the ISS live feed. It shows Earth spinning in space. As we know, the spin is only 15 degrees per hour. If you're waiting for Bob here, by the way, my apologies, I'm trying to withdraw from using him. A 15 degree per hour drift. As you can see, it's proving difficult. Thanks, Bob. The point is, this rotational speed is very slow, twice as slow as the hour hand on a clock. You can see it spinning, just not very quickly. Convinced? Well, if you didn't fall for that, then why would you fall for this? Maybe you just never paid attention. So that little dial that they're highlighting there is the altitude in kilometers. Not really sure why they're highlighting it though. When you do pay attention, you start to notice things. Are you paying attention? This is likely a fisheye lens. No one's claiming that it's not. But crucially, we're not claiming that this is solid evidence for curvature. It's just a camera that SpaceX uses to show the outside of a rocket. So we've got ODD TV, a flat earther who is so convinced that the earth is flat, 
that he now spends his time making rap videos. Um, I would you know, get out, um, wear my glass, um, drink most of it, uh, leaving a little bit at the bottom. That's Dave Murphy. He drinks urine. Ah, Flat Earth Millionaire. He owes me $200,000. Don't know Santos Bonucci. Or that dude. Ah, there's the big name drop. And there is our local yoga instructor. Now, this is by no means a pop at yoga instructors. I'm sure they're very good at what they do. My point is here that they aren't qualified scientists. Did you know that starting at the end of 2015, through 2017, flat earth was one of the top search terms in the USA, let alone the world. And did you also know that from 2017 to the present, it has become almost irrelevant? And in actual fact, more people are now interested in foreskin than they are in flat earth. Ouch. While most of you were falling for the political charades, the rest of us were trying to discover the true nature about our world. My name is ODD TV. Screw it. I'm going to make a YouTube channel and start talking in videos. There has never been one experiment that proves that the Earth is in motion. Um, Foucault's pendulum, gyroscopes, the Coriolis effect, trade winds, and ocean currents, to name a few. When you try to find the curvature of the Earth, it's nowhere to be found. Ranty's photo says otherwise, ODD. Check this video out quickly before carrying on if you haven't seen it yet. It's golden. Unless you're looking at footage from GoPro cameras that have fisheye lenses, Hollywood movies, or NASA propaganda. Started making the videos in 2014, early 2015. Started getting noticed. You're living in a world where there's fake people faking events on TV in order to move agendas forward with the earth being flat. I couldn't just sit around and do nothing. There was videos everywhere. There was videos of people doing science, putting balloons up with a camera that doesn't have a fisheye lens on it, like a GoPro lens, a wide angle lens. Oh, you mean like Mr. Sensible did? Because I think you'll find he kind of smashed that one for you. And they were using these cameras that didn't have those. The horizon rose to eye level, which would be impossible on a ball that would be falling away from you as you rose up. That's not how this works, ODD. This picture here was taken by MC Toon on a flight from Anchorage to Minneapolis. Here is another example from someone else. And another. Your eye is not a scientific instrument. The horizon may appear to rise to eye level, but that isn't always the case. There's people putting out top 10 NASA hoax videos, debunking the moon landing, picking apart NASA just left and right. It was awesome. Awesome time for YouTube between 2015 and 17. And when did I start my channel? Just saying, just saying. Even Google mentioned it during their commercial. Do you remember this? Why would Google be promoting this? As a joke? As a joke? No. We know why. They were panicking. Really? Panicking over what? Why would Google care if the Earth is flat or not? Panicking because the platform they purchased 10 years ago was collapsing with truth. The powers that be would not allow that. As we want to provide users with authoritative, trustworthy Ms. information. Downs, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I only have a minute and a half. And I, I, I don't really need to hear what you're trying to provide. I want to know how you're dealing with all these conspiracy theorists on your platform.
So the, the first way is by demoting low quality content and promoting more authoritative content. And the second is by providing more transparency for users. So we're introducing boxes that provide factual information at the top of results that have shown themselves to turn up a lot of information that is counterfactual, such as searching for the earth is flat on YouTube, where you see a lot of- Your response is to put a box out. saying, nope, the earth is not flat. Correct. Okay. So instead of deleting all of the millions of videos we have made, they simply decided to bring in their puppets to reiterate the agenda at stake. Let's not mess around here, Eric. Those videos you speak of, those millions of videos, are patently false information. They can lead people down paths that can literally destroy their lives. Listen to what Seek Truth Speak Truth said on the Simon Dan podcast. How, looking back on that now, yeah. how do you think of, of yourself back then and and because you you it affected you quite a bit personally didn't it yeah it did um yeah i mean it did it pushed a lot of my sort of people close to me away friends if you know what i mean so it really did have quite a quite a quite a big impact um and it's a bit of a shame really because obviously we've had all the lockdowns all our well i say a shame um but i haven't had that opportunity to kind of get out and meet those people again if you know what I mean yeah but I kind of know that you know people will actually invite me to barbecues again yeah. we are already sufficiently motivated to invest the necessary resources and people in addressing this threat you can tell it's real because it looks so fake honestly <laughs> the earth being flat is getting out of control can you please help can you please help when you stand on the shoulders of those who came before you might just see far enough to realize the earth isn't Flat. One plus one is? Two. What color is the sky? Blue. And the earth is? Round. <laughs> Just like it is here. <laughs> this flow celebrates flat earth theory that is spreading ironically around the world and it's possible roundness. Uh, spinning. <laughs> now they are talking about it. Yes, Eric, because a group of people started to actually doubt it. This means we could then take that fact that people are doubting it and turn it into a joke, because the world being a sphere is in keeping with other facts, like the sky is blue. They want you to search for it, because they already changed their algorithm to be set up in their favor. What is this trash? None of this tells you our side of the story. These are all videos they put together, so you can watch and learn nothing. Yeah, Professor Dave, woo! Nothing that any of us would show you. Like here, have you ever seen a time lapse of the sun? Does it look like the earth is rotating backwards and the sun is still? Or does it look like our sun is simply moving across our sky? traveling away from your perspective. Well, from our perspective, which by the way is on a giant planet that is orbiting the sun, then the sun does appear to move. But that is all irrelevant because we have probes in space right now monitoring the sun from an orbit as close as 4 million miles. We see Mars move across the backdrop of stars one way and then the next two months later moving the other way. That is precisely because of our own orbit around the sun and Mars's. Again, but with some inversion, you can clearly see the sun, not only decreasing its size, but heading towards its next destination with a slight turn before it disappears from your line of sight. That's really funny because one of your own, Eric, one of your own flat earthers did this experiment and found that there was no major angular size change as the sun sets. Lens flare. While Google would make sure when you type in flat earth that nothing like this would ever pop up, many agree the science regarding our sun is far from settled. Many agree. How many? Six? We're told that the sun is a massive ball of burning gas 93 million miles away. Oh, here he is, allegedly Dave. But if that were true, then all the light that arrives here would be parallel because it's so far away. And for all intents and purposes, it is. And it has to be parallel because one of the most often cited supposed globe proofs is Eratosthenes' experiment between Alexandria and Syene, 
by which he calculated the size of the Earth. Bloody clever stuff, that. For that calculation to be accurate, the light must come down parallel. The only problem is that that's not what we see. If you go out on a sunny day with broken cloud, what you'll see is that light comes down at angles, diverging angles. That is purely because of the perspective of the viewer. Look at these train tracks. Now, we know that these train tracks are parallel, otherwise the trains won't be able to travel on them. Yet they appear to be diverging still from the viewer's perspective. We know that those tracks don't come together at the horizon. Yet flat earthers want us to believe that the sun is literally behind the clouds in this image. Watch out, lady, there's a giant ball of nuclear reactor right outside that window. And that means that we can follow those light rays back to the source and triangulate the sun's height above the Earth. Yeah, just like we can triangulate the distance to the end of those train tracks. Proving that the sun isn't millions of miles away. But we can also perform physical experiments that prove that these crepuscular rays, as they're called, can only be recreated with a light source that is small and close. It doesn't take a genius to understand that the further the light source goes up, the more the sun rays would spread out and become parallel. The reason you'd even think that the sun... If the Earth was flat, wouldn't it be sunny all the time? Good point. Uh, I mean, have they ever even thought about it? Well, if you'd let me finish, the reason you'd even think the sun would be visible from anywhere on Earth is because of the images they have shown you. No one promoting this stands for truth. You can keep believing in your fantasy gas ball 93 million miles away. You can keep believing in your fantasy gas ball. While we keep experimenting to try and figure out what the sun actually is. But we know exactly what it is. Has a flat earther ever looked at the sun's rays through a spectroscope? You can literally read off a list of elements from the absorption spectrum if you do. We've studied the magnetic field of the sun and have even studied other stars in other phases of life to understand how our sun will evolve and die. And how close it could be. With a local hotspot, it should be easy to comprehend that the sun is small and close to you. To put that in perspective, imagine a table two meters wide in a completely dark room and you're holding a, a small but very bright light bulb, 3.4 millimetres across, and you were holding it about 31 centimetres above the table. What you'd see is a circular pool of light directly on the table, you know, beneath the light bulb. But on the other side of the table, it would be in darkness. Now, it seems to our mind that um, if you were on the uh, other side of the table, you would see the light because it's, you know, above the, above the table. But that's not true because on that part of the table, it's in darkness, meaning that the light isn't physically reaching that part of the tabletop. Dave, 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 Dave. The image on the screen right now is literally debunking what you're saying. Look. The area of the table that the camera is in is in darkness, yet we can see the bulb emitting light. Also, how does the sun manage to wrap its light around the edges of the flat earth, yet leave a circle of darkness in the middle during the southern hemisphere summer? Your senses are correct. We're also told that the sun sets because as the Earth rotates us away from the sun, it's actually obscured by the physical curvature of the Earth. That's not what we see. What we see is a local sun that is taking its local light with it. The thing is, Eric, we've got this thing called an atmosphere, which is tremendously good at refracting light. It does so especially well when we're looking at the sun through more of the atmosphere at dawn and dusk. What happened to the horizon glowing across half of the world? Most sunsets are already fading through pollution, dander, chemtrails, and fog. Plus, refraction will always make the sun seem like it's going down, as well as your perspective. It would appear to sink down in your field of view. That's perspective. 
Ah, so perspective counts here, but not with crepuscular rays. Gotcha. The further away you get from it, the lower it will appear. It doesn't physically change its height, it just appears that way to your eyes, until eventually it will disappear behind the horizon formed by your eye's vanishing point. Because we are rotating, Dave. Your eye has an angular resolution of 0.2 degrees. I think he means 0.02 degrees. Well done, Dave. Getting the numbers wrong since forever. And anything at that height will disappear beyond the limit of your sight. Many times we can see uh, time-lapse footage of the sun that shows it getting smaller as it moves away from us. Now, that's not always the case, since the sun is traveling around the North Pole. The closer you are to the North, the less you'll see the size change. What about the Northern Hemisphere winter though? When in your model, one in which, let's remember, Eric himself has shown, the sun is further away from you. But from locations beyond the equator, you'll absolutely see the sun's size change. And that could never ever happen if the sun was 93 million miles away. You wouldn't see the sun change at all. And we really don't. All the clips you were showing there were done so without the use of a filter. As I showed earlier, here is Phuket Word filming the sun with a filter. He lives in Phuket, which is about 500 miles from the equator. He showed no real angular size change whatsoever. Our eyes cannot see farther than what they were designed to see, but that is no reason to keep them closed. There's also an effect that occurs under certain conditions called atmospheric lensing where the sheer amount of atmosphere, as well as the rain between you and the sun, acts like a lens and a prism, magnifying it greatly, which leads to another observational proof that the sun setting is an optical effect. At such times, when the sun is setting over the sea, and it seems as though it's half hidden by the horizon, then you can zoom in with a high-powered zoom camera and see that it's actually still above the horizon. It's just an optical illusion. Okay, so how about if you zoom into the sun when it's setting like this? Or this. Or this. Pay attention to the sun rays here. This alone proves our local sun. And so do these shadows. How does that prove a local sun? You've not explained how those shadows prove anything. So what about the moon? We all witness the moon only illuminating the local clouds around it. That is because it is also a local light, but one with opposite effects from the sun. As we can all agree, shade from the sun is cooler than direct sunlight. But did you know, the moon's shade is actually warmer than direct moonlight? The moon produces cold light, something the science priests must have forgotten to teach us all about in school. This has been debunked hundreds of times. That area there that is in direct moonlight is completely exposed, so is subject to a phenomenon called radiative cooling. This means that there is nowhere for the heat that is radiating off the Earth to go, unlike under the chair there, which immediately warms the local area. Not only that, but at times we can see stars through the moon, proving it is not some solid rock 238,900 miles away. They are not stars, just highlighted areas of the craters. In the 60s, true science regarding the moon was the shadow band topic of its era. I must consider myself to be an ordinary, humble person who wants to serve mankind with what we, man has striven for from the beginning of consciousness with truth and understanding of the world. Well, now, one thing, you have a theory about the moon and we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Um, what is your theory? Watch Eric hang off this man's every word. Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock 
but it is a plasma, cosmic plasma. Gravitational theories are out and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. This fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958 and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. Um, it's 2021, buddy. I'm afraid it hasn't been confirmed. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct in your theories? The result will be uh, profound and decisive. Because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it. The, and the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Oh, well, that will never happen. <coughs> People actually believe they walked on the moon. Talked with Nixon. Played golf. Drove a car. And planted a flag. If you really believe that Neil Armstrong took the first step, then why do you give any credit to the cameraman already there waiting for him? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe because it wasn't a cameraman? It was a camera, yes, but one in which was lowered on the outside of the lunar module pointing back towards the exit. <laughs> These guys were all US military men coerced into acting. They wanted the money and power that came with the deal, of course. Michael Collins, rest in peace, was the only man in Apollo 11 who didn't set foot on the moon. His salary was $17,000 per year. That's about the equivalent of $119,000 today. Now I think that's pretty bad considering he was risking his life for his job. The problem was they were terrible actors. They couldn't even pretend to be excited knowing they were lying to the world. The thing is, they weren't actors. Surely if they were faking it, they would have bought in the best actors of the generation. But the show had to go on. Michael Collins and Neil Armstrong rarely spoke in public about it. But there was one man not shy about lying to your face. The spokesperson for the Apollo deception. It's my pleasure to present Colonel Edwin Alden. No handshake? Hug? Smile? Their facial expressions are similar to those experiencing constipation. Ah, constipation. Good one, Eric. Let's try that one too. Yep, that's way more popular. Not celebrating an accomplishment. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great sense of pride as an American and with humility as a human being that I say to you today what no men have been privileged to say before. We walked on the moon. I mean, they couldn't pay them enough to look up and smile? Society has always debated these planned Apollo events since day one, never imagining then that almost 50 years later, they haven't had the balls to fake another. Well, they are going back. Artemis is scheduled for 2024. As a tattooer, I talk to hundreds of people a month and people are actually really starting to wake up with everything that's going on right now. I mean, people are sick of the lies. This is the biggest deception ever. Now, I've obviously got nothing against tattoo artists. Hi Kaz, if you're watching. Uh, but again, they're not scientists. The globe. The spinning ball globe is the biggest deception. If NASA was legit, literally all they would have to do is one thing. Take one of their satellites, zoom in on someone in Australia, upside down, driving a car. Actually, our satellites are pretty sophisticated nowadays. You can get some pretty good images if you just do the research or in the ocean, swimming upside down. That's all they would have to do, just zoom in. But they, they won't do it, they'll never do it. It's been done several times. We have the, the, the footage of them in the space capsule, still in Earth orbit, covering up a small section of the window so you can see through the circle and making that look like that was the Earth. And this is, this is a joke. I mean, how do people think this is real? But if they've never been to space, why are you using that as an argument? It's almost as if you're accepting that they were in space. I think it's hilarious that NASA will straight up tell you we destroyed the technology to go to the moon. 
Is the Saturn V rocket in use now? Yes or no? I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. But they destroyed the technology and they can't go back. It's ridiculous. Is it? NASA still don't have a launch vehicle. Why is that ridiculous? There's an interview with Buzz Aldrin actually where he's uh, being interviewed by a little girl. Her question was, why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there and and that's the way it happened. Totally taken out of context here because Buzz goes on to say that at the moment we simply can't afford it. Classic flat earther quote mining there. After 50 years of lying to humanity and perpetrating this giant fraud, he's sick of a lie and he, his conscience, he had a moment of humility and his conscience wouldn't let him lie to this little eight-year-old girl. You genuinely see and hear what you want to, don't you? This silly globe model with water magically attached to it, spinning at a thousand miles an hour, shooting around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour, and rocketing through the universe at a half a million miles an hour is just the goofiest, silly thing that I've ever heard in my life. Incredulity alert! Incredulity alert! Incredulity alert! They want you to think you're a monkey man, a purposeless accident created by nothing, that exploded from a big bang that was created, not by scientists, by a priest, mind you, while they steal $58 million a day in taxpayers' money to show you cartoons, CGI. They, they just have to show you enough of Hollywood and magic tricks and for you to believe the nonsense. That's some pretty expensive CGI right there, isn't it? It shocks me how many people actually believe they're floating above our heads. It's all filmed here on Earth. Outer space is a fantasy. Yet you argue that the astronauts were blocking the window in the spaceship to portray a globe Earth. You can't have it both ways, buddy. The Earth is a stationary plane. Google bubbles in space. You can literally see bubbles coming up from these astronauts' helmets. It's ridiculous. When I when I saw it, I was like, "This is this is a joke." So um, many times during um, spacewalks outside the International Space Station, we can see air bubbles rising up. Can you touch on how there are air bubbles in space? What an absolute embarrassment that is to actually ask that question. And no, they are not air bubbles, because air bubbles don't move in different directions. They're ice crystals that fly off the astronauts and the space station when disturbed. Right, I think this would be a good time to take a break here and wrap up this first segment. I told you it was going to be a thorough one, didn't I? Tune in next month for part two. Please do share this video as much as you can. I want it to appear in every single search engine possible and I want it to be seen before the actual film itself. Thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe. I'm gonna give you a little like goal here, 50,000 likes for this video. See if you can get that. Just enough time to once again thank Skillshare for sponsoring today. Really appreciate it. Remember, the first 1,000 of you to click my link in the description gets a free trial of their premium membership so you can explore your creativity. I have been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday for some more tinfoil fun. See you then.